In this series, we piss off transphobes. One video at a time. And a few things up front here. This is an allegory, not literal. Second, Christmas is a pagan secular holiday at this point, so... No, it's not a Christian holiday. And third, not all Christians are transphobes. And fourth, transphobia is a form of bigotry and will not be tolerated here. And also, if you decide to comment, the algorithm will just show you more trans stuff. Anyway, let's talk about the movie. So the film starts off with Santa correcting the positioning of deer in a storefront, but even though all the deer are identical, this film has an interesting question that is left unanswered throughout the entire film. Why isn't Santa at the North Pole? Pole. You would expect him to be working up at the North Pole. You wouldn't expect him to take his vacation from Thanksgiving to Christmas Eve. There's a lot of preparation to get done. But in a way, this sort of sets the frame for the story being told, which is, is this guy Santa or not? And so it's a Thanksgiving Macy's Day parade, and he steps in for an intoxicated Santa, which just happens. No need to run a background check or anything. It's the 1940s. No one cares what demons you may or may not have in your closet. Then there's this girl, Susan. She doesn't believe in Santa Claus or fairy tales because her mother told her to. Which is interesting because now there's a movement amongst parents to not tell their kids that Santa is real because it would violate their trust, which is an interesting sort of debate. And feel free to leave a comment about that letting me know what you think of that. And then there's Mr. Gailey, a guy. He's invited to the Thanksgiving dinner because, well, they have a big turkey and no one to share it with. We gotta have some sort of romance in this film, after all. And Susan's mother, she works for Macy's and reports to Mr. Macy. Which is interesting because Mr. Macy actually died in 1877. And then there's this kid who likes to play Santa named Alfred. And no, he's not the Batman butler. Alfred is a socialist and a communist. Yeah, there's a lot of bad isms floating around this world, but one of the worst is commercialism. And so the Santa who likes to correct storefronts and stepped in at the last minute for the Macy's Day Parade is working there at Macy's and he's giving out recommendations to go to different stores. Now for me, this doesn't seem that weird. When I was growing up, this was just a normal thing that happened. If a store didn't have what you were looking for, they just tell you go somewhere else. I don't know if this movie actually started that. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this. But then they do a little digging and they realize this guy actually thinks he's Kris Kringle. Like, that's what it says on his employment card and everything. And, and there are some funny details on this card. Name Kris Kringle lives at an old folks home. And his date of birth is listed as as old as my tongue and a little bit older than my teeth. Birthplace, North Pole. Next of kin, the reindeer. So Macy's decides to keep this Santa on board because money. Speaking of money, it would really mean a lot if you helped me out by signing up for my Patreon. Plans are so $3 a month. You can watch an uncensored, extended version of this video on there, along with a whole bunch of other stuff on there, including early access for videos for my $5 and up patrons. But hey, if you can't afford to be a patron, at least subscribe and give this video a like. Thank you so much. Let's get back to the video. And Macy's has a psychologist because, you know, it's such a toxic workplace environment at Macy's. Macy's don't sue me. And the psychiatrist there wants him institutionalized because he has delusions. I don't think there's any doubt about it. He should be placed in a mental institution. Oh, I don't agree, Mr. Sawyer. People are only institutionalized to prevent them from harming themselves or other people. Sounds like my comment section, doesn't it? And the people at this old folks home say, yeah, he's delusional, but he's delusional for good. Now, trans people, you're not delusional. But seriously, transphobes are so warped in the head that they think that any sort of delusion, which being trans is not, they see as something you need to be locked away for. Because they don't understand mental health either. Seriously, when you are obsessive and creating conspiracy theories, that is a form of delusion. So be careful before you start throwing rocks at your glass house. At the meeting, someone brings up the fact that there's this guy in Hollywood who believes himself to be a Russian prince and he owns all these restaurants. But the name's escaping them. Nice way to avoid a lawsuit there, huh? Who, by the way, is a real person, and Michael Romanoff. And the psychiatrist there thinks any sort of challengement to this would lead to violence, which, in the case of this film, possibly, but really that's and you try to equate that to trans people, because think about it. I get misgendered on the comments all the time. And I don't commit violent acts. Same thing where Susan doesn't play with the other kids. Honestly, relatable. I didn't really do that much either. Probably because I'm autistic. And Chris Kringle, he thinks this is weird. And also, he didn't know about it. So he's not always watching them. Another clue. 
this may not be the real Kris Kringle. Susan, she wants some proof to prove that this guy is really Kris Kringle. And she asks him to get them a house. But given the cost of houses, yeah, that's a bit unreasonable. And Macy's and Gimbal's decide to give Santa some extra money, which will come in handy when he buys an x-ray machine. Trust me, it doesn't mean much later on. And then Kris Kringle approaches the psychiatrist about Alfred, because Alfred says that the psychiatrist is diagnosing him as like having father issues because he likes to dress up like Santa and impress the kids. First off, I ain't doing this for the kids. And yeah, the psychiatrist has no training, much like the people in my comments, so Santa decides to commit battery on this guy. He literally evades the question when asked if he is licensed. So yeah, this guy's not licensed. And then he's tricked into going to Bellevue Hospital because, wow, that's a dark turn. What's made clear is what happens to Chris matters to others in this film. Because, well, Santa is a symbol. He is a symbol of charity and kindness. And frankly, of the holidays as a whole. And much like that, trans people, we are valuable to society. We matter to society. We as people matter to society. I transitioned because I needed to. I would not be alive today if I didn't transition. And I'm also a beacon of hope for a lot of trans people out there. I get comments every day from people talking about how my videos have made a difference. Trans people have value in society as well. If trans people disappear, society will crumble. And then this becomes a big trial, and there's a whole bunch of publicity around this, and the judge gets in trouble with his family, because of course he does. And of course, there's also a lot of smoking in the court. This is the 1940s, after all. And Chris has asked a bunch of questions in the court, which, bad idea. Bad idea. Do not answer questions if you are not required to. They bring up something very poignant here. No one questions the judge's identity. Mr. Kringle is not sane because he believes himself to be Santa Claus. An entirely logical and reasonable assumption, I'm afraid. It would be if the clerk here or Mr. Mara or I believed that we were Santa Claus. Anyone who thinks he's Santa Claus is not sane. Not necessarily. You believe yourself to be Judge Harper. Yet no one questions your sanity because you are Judge Harper. I know all about myself, young man. Mr. Kringle is the subject of this hearing. Yes, Your Honor. And if he is the person he believes himself to be, just as you are, then he's just as sane. Granted, but he isn't. Oh, but he is, Your Honor. But they question Chris Kringle's identity. Cis people's identity is never called into questions. But trans people, our identities are. If you're a guy who was born with a penis, are you sure you're a man? Are you really sure? Ma'am, I can't do that. But people can call me a man every day. Who are you to know who I am? You're not me. Can you read my thoughts? And Rainbow Capitalist gets involved here because of course they believe Santa, much like how big, huge companies believe trans people, which I have some serious doubts about. The reason major companies support trans rights is not out of the goodness of their hearts. It's because of the money. They know that trans people are a market they cannot live without. There are almost 2 million trans people in the United States. You cannot live without our money. That's like if you decide to get rid of Hawaii. And also, this trial should be a First Amendment case, but nonetheless, that does not matter. But what really solidifies this message in the end is the mail. Because the post office has been sending this guy letters as Chris Kringle. And that has made it official by the U.S. government. So therefore, the trial is dismissed. Accepting mail under a certain name makes you that person. Well then, I'm Sally because I receive mail under that name for years now, so seriously, stop. I'm a woman, and not just because I'm getting male as a woman. And I know trans people, you're probably thinking, this is a really weak video, what the hell are you talking about? Santa Claus is not a real person. Santa Claus is a feeling you get. It's more than that. Much like gender, gender is like that. Gender is a feeling you have, and it is ingrained in our culture, much like Santa Claus. Sure, there may not be a real guy named Santa Claus who breaks into your home every year and leaves presents under the tree. But what does happen is that trans people, we exist. We live our lives as who we are and we're happier as a result. That is real. And lastly, the film wraps up with a message that sort of leaves you on a cliffhanger of like, yeah, this guy probably isn't Santa, but you know, it's this nice sweet message in the end. Oh wait, he's real. I wish this film left it more open-ended, 
but nonetheless, it's still good. If you enjoyed this video, I highly recommend you watch my video, What Cis People Can Learn From Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and I also recommend you check out my video, Transphobe or Ally Elf Edition. Thank you.